Previously, we saw that the hypothesis of logistic regression looks as follows, and that the value of the hypothesis gives us the probability that a given input example belongs to the positive class. We've also seen that we get a decision boundary if we plot all the points where our hypothesis is equal to 0.5. But there is one thing we haven't seen yet. Before we can make predictions with our hypothesis, we must train the model so that we get good values for the parameters theta. And that's what we will see right now. We will see how we can fit the parameters theta through the data, so that we get a hypothesis that will give accurate predictions. If you remember from the video of linear regression, to do this we will define a cost function. And then by minimizing this cost function, we will find good values for theta. So the first step is defining a cost function for logistic regression. But what is a cost function again? The cost function is a measure of how well a machine learning's model predictions match the true labels or targets in the training data. It quantifies the difference between the predicted output of the model and the actual target values. So, for example, if our learning algorithm predicts that a person has 20% chance of being sick, but it turns out our training example has the label y is equal to 1, meaning that the person was in fact sick, we will penalize the learning algorithm by a certain amount, basically telling the algorithm it made a mistake. The choice of cost function depends on the specific problem and the type of machine learning algorithm being used. Different algorithms and tasks may require different cost functions. Do you remember what cost function we used in linear regression? If you know the answer, type it in the comments. It looked as follows. It measures the average square difference between the predicted and the actual values. It penalizes large errors more heavily than smaller errors. And as you might remember, it's called the mean squared error function. You may also remember that for linear regression, this function was always a convex function, meaning that when we used gradient descent to minimize this cost function, we would always end up in the global minimum. While on the other hand, if you would have a cost function that is non-convex, you could get stuck in a local minimum. So you are not guaranteed to end up in the global minimum, and this is bad. You could never be sure that your algorithm ends up with the best possible values for theta, which lay in the global minimum. Now here is the problem. If we would use the mean squared error function as the cost function for logistic regression, the cost function will be non-convex, for the reason that now our hypothesis has a non-linearity caused by the sigmoid function. So to make the story short, we need a different cost function, one that is convex for our current hypothesis. This way we are sure we end up in the global minimum if we run an algorithm like gradient descent, which is used to minimize this cost function. This other cost function is called the binary cross entropy loss function, and it's used in binary classification tasks. It is also known as log loss and measures the difference between the predicted probabilities and the true binary labels. It penalizes confidently wrong predictions more heavily than less confident ones. What this means will become clear in a minute. But first, let's try to understand how we got this long term. To do this, let's call this long part the cost. Now it becomes way more clear what we are trying to do. We want to sum over all the training examples, and for each training example, we measure a certain cost of how far the estimated value lays from the actual label of that training example. And once we have the sum of all these errors, we divide the sum by m to obtain the average error.
As you see, this cost will depend on what the value of our label y is. So our cost can be one of two cases. Either y is equal to 1 and we will take this cost or y is 0 and our cost will take this form. Now you might wonder, wait a second. Here we see this one pretty long term and now you're saying that we have two terms depending on the value of y. Is this still the same function we are talking about? That's a good question and yes, by adding these two parts we can incorporate these if terms into just one function. We do this because it's easier to work with just one function than having to deal with these if cases. Y can only be one of two cases, either it's 1 or it's 0. And thus, if Y is 1, this other term will always be 0, and thus this entire part will fall away. On the other hand, if y is 0, this first term will fall away, and our cost function will reduce to only this term. And if you now bring the minus sign outside the summation, you get exactly the same function. So yes, it's still the same function we are talking about. Let us now plot these two functions so that it becomes clear why we use these two different terms to decide the cost. First, let's look to the case in which y is equal to 1. In this case, when our hypothesis also predicts 1, our learning algorithm gave the correct answer and the cost is 0. But when our hypothesis is 0, while the label is 1, we have an infinite cost. And we give it an infinite value because this captures our intuition of the hypothesis being a probability. Because what we are saying here is that our learning algorithm tells us that the probability of something happening is 0%. This means it is completely sure it is false. Well, in fact, it's true. So it's the same as a doctor telling a patient there is 0% that his tumor is malignant while in fact it is malignant. This is really bad, so we penalize this with an extreme value. For the other case, y is equal to 0, we follow the exact same reasoning, only now, when our model predicts that y is 1, but the label of the training data is 0, we give it a very high cost. And when we predict it is 0, and the label tells us it's 0, our model is correct, thus we give it a cost of zero. Now, let's recap. We have seen that this function is the cost function we will use in logistic regression. We didn't prove it, but this function is convex for logistic regression. So we are sure we will end up in a global minimum if we run gradient descent. So now, what's left to do is to implement the gradient descent algorithm so that we can find the minimum of our cost function. This will give us the optimal values for the parameters theta. These parameters will make sure our model will fit the data well and thus give us accurate predictions. So in the next part we will see gradient descent, the optimization algorithm that will find the minimum of our cost function.